Good evening, everybody. Uh, you are very welcome to our Good Friday service. It's lovely to see so many people uh, gathered in, and also to have somebody here straight from Windsor Castle, so that's wonderful. Jim, thank you for coming and, and gracing us with your presence tonight. If anybody has noticed the little WhatsApp post and, and, the, and the web post, uh, we're very proud uh, that Jim was recognised for his work yesterday in Windsor Castle when he received the Monday money, and uh, hopefully we can show them to the children on, on Sunday if we're allowed to do that, but I think that's it's a wonderful honour and just a, a privilege as well. Uh, part of Holy Week involves these services that we come to and there's this real a powerful uh, move of the Spirit that we can feel as we move through Holy Week. Last night we had our Monday Thursday service which commemorates and remembers the Passover, remembers the betrayal and at the end of that service when you all left, the church was stripped of all vestments, so flowers and, and, uh, and, the, little, and the little bits around the eagle and just the covering for the pulpit and everything has been removed just to signify the emptiness of Good Friday. And the cross has moved forward. It, it's central and uh, it's, just, it's just a very special time for us as a church to remember what happened on Good Friday. So tonight we have a number of hymns to sing and just I want to uh, go through a few quick announcements as we start together. Uh, Easter Sunday, we're back here at half past nine for Holy Communion. So if you wish to have communion on Easter Sunday, you must come to the half nine service because at the 11 a.m. service, we'll be having a family, uh, an all age worship celebration, which involves, hopefully, the egg race. So I hope you've been boiling your eggs and coloring them and decorating them. And uh, we're going to do the little egg rolling race on the hill after immediately after the service, followed by a hunt, an Easter egg hunt on the way to the hall, which I stress is for the children. So if I see any adults with some of the eggs, you will fear the wrath of the rector. Uh, you don't want to do that, but uh, please uh, come along. If you're not normally with us, if you don't go anywhere else, we encourage you to come and join us as we celebrate Easter Sunday together. On Monday, uh, the the Drumbo Area Action Committee are having a car treasure hunt. It begins, you can pick up your little pack between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. from the Orange Hall up in Drumbo. I don't know if you've been up through Drumbo lately, but, but the Orange Hall has had a bit of work done to the front of it that looks wonderful. So if you can go along and support them, and there's hot dogs and drinks afterwards back at the Orange Hall. And as I said last night, some of the clues may be in the rectory fields, so uh, you know where you're going to uh, from that as well. So please get along and uh, enter that treasure hunt. So tonight, as I said, we're going to just take a bit of more time to focus on the cross. And I've entitled, entitled tonight, quite simply, Behold the Cross. And as you sit here, as we pray, as we sing songs, as we sing familiar songs, and as we hear the words of the crucifixion, just focus on the cross if you can, but just open your heart and your mind to what God has in store for you. We come tonight, and we probably come with many different emotions. Some of us may be just feeling completely empty and lost inside, and we have to place ourselves in the followers at the time of the crucifixion. There was mixed emotions, there was bewilderment, there was sorrow, there was despair, but still they were at the foot of the cross. So let us pray. Lord, we just pray indeed that your Holy Spirit will descend upon us this night as we come together as a body of people here in church and for those joining us online. We just pray that we may know the Spirit of God in our lives. And perhaps for those of us that are in despair, Lord, that we will feel the warmth of your love. And so we have the bidding for Good Friday. Behold the cross displayed whereon the Saviour of the world did hang. 
O come, let us worship and bow down. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we come together that we may hear again how our Lord and Saviour suffered upon the cross, and that hearing we may offer our lives anew to him who died for us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And so I want to read you our first reading. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders and the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply. And Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want to release me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked him. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. This is the word of the Lord. And we stand together to sing how deep the Father's love
that's a, a beautiful hymn. And no matter who we are or how we feel or no matter what we have done, on this Good Friday we recognize that Jesus Christ died for you and he died for me. And it says, why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, that his wounds have paid my ransom. You'll probably be glad to know that there will be no big long sermon uh, tonight. Well, some of you will, but it's just, I think this service speaks for itself as we hear the words read to us of the account of the crucifixion and as we sing these familiar words, it really speaks of the love that God had for us when he gave his only begotten son, that he gave his son to die for each one of us. And so I want to pray the colic for Good Friday and also for this season of Lent. Almighty Father, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And Almighty God, and Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we continue with our reading from Mark's Gospel. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the Praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his clothes on him. Then they led him out to be crucified. Then they laid him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days? Come down from the cross and save yourself. This is the word of the Lord. And we stand to sing, O oh, to see the dawn. Oh, 
singing so well weren't it we maybe should have just repeated those couple of verses again that would have been easier but again that's another wonderful song and probably if we would have sang all of it we'd have been uh, really uh, understanding really what the cross means for each of us and so we continue uh, with the account of the crucifixion and the death of jesus at noon darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon and at three in the afternoon jesus cried out in a loud voice Eli, lama sabachna, which means my god my god why have you forsaken me when some of those standing near heard this they said listen he's calling elijah some ran filled a sponge with wine vinegar put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely, this was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. This is the word of the Lord. That passage of scripture, that final passage, really brings to an end the crucifixion. But for us who are Christians, it's not the end that we know when we will celebrate on Sunday the resurrection. But I have chosen quite simply this passage of scripture because lately I have come across people and indeed you may be here that you have feel that you have felt that you have been forsaken by God and sometimes we flippantly say that Jesus has experienced all the things that we have experienced and we can just very easily say that from the pulpit but here we see at the crucifixion that Jesus felt that emptiness he felt that disconnection from God and he cried out why have you forsaken me and there are many different books written about that particular moment where Jesus felt completely bereft and alone but the beauty is this is that God rose him from the dead that he gave him eternal life not just that Jesus had eternal life but also that we can have that if we simply 
believe in him. There's another important piece to this passage of scripture. And if we look at it, us men sometimes gloss over it. But when it came down to the nitty gritty, it was really only the women who were left. And they tended to Jesus. And so we see the faithfulness and the love of a mother. We see the faithfulness and love of those who followed him to the end. But for us here in Bali Lesson, indeed those joining online, this is not the end. But it's the start of a glorious beginning. Let us pray. And Lord, as we have gathered around the cross, as we have gathered around the empty cross here in Bali Lesson, it gives us a tremendous hope. Lord, for those who feel lost, Lord, for those who feel forsaken, you have given us the hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we just pray in this place that your Holy Spirit will quicken each of our hearts. Lord, that we will be aware of your presence. Lord, that we will act on what we have seen, Lord, and on what we have heard. And Lord, as we remember your suffering on this night, we continue to remember those who suffer through illness. And we especially want to lift before you tonight, Alison. Lord, we just pray that she will be aware of your presence in her life. Lord, we continue, Lord, to pray for Etta. And Lord, we just continue, Lord, to pray for those, Lord, who are receiving treatment. Lord, for illness, we pray that they will feel your arms wrap around them at this time. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we just indeed take a moment as we gaze upon this empty cross, Lord, to lay before you our own requests. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, for Sunday. Lord, that we indeed, Lord, will enjoy, Lord, and, and take part in the excitement, Lord, of, of our young people, Lord, but also, Lord, that we, Lord, will celebrate the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we celebrate, Lord, we pray, Lord, Lord, that people will come to you for the first time. Lord, we pray for those who have fallen away will be restored. And Lord, we pray for a continued revival in this community and in this land. Lord, in your mercy. And so, Lord, we sum up our prayers in that wonderful prayer that you taught your disciples as we pray together. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I do promise you I have all the verses for this last hymn, which is an absolutely tremendous hymn and one that really encapsulates this day and indeed our faith in who Jesus Christ is. We're going to bring our service to a close by standing and singing when I survey the wondrous cross. Will you please stand?
is a challenge for us as we leave this place tonight. That is his love so amazing, so divine, demands our souls, our lives and our all. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit,